Hey, welcome back to What's Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm doing an unboxing of Norman Conquest, Conflicts of the Normans and their successors from 1053 to 1265. This is Men of Iron, Volume 5, designed by Ralph Shelton. Uh, so again, this continues the Men of Iron, Iron series. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm really loving, I'm really loving that artwork on the cover. That is just too cool. That is just too, too cool. So. Um, this is for two players. Uh, there is no solo system. Obviously, you can true solo this playing both sides if you want to. Um, the complexity level is only a four, and the solitaire suitability is a seven. So, you know, probably not a lot of hidden information. Um, it says combat resolution is a single die roll. So if you're not used to the system, it's, you know, plays out pretty quick. So let's dig in real quick and just see what you get inside. All right, so then I have to take that beautiful box off. All right, here we go. So this is the rules manu manual for the Men of Iron Tri Pack. Okay, this is on GMT's matte finish. Good quality. Uh, looks like there's a lot of examples. Kind of a medium print. A lot of white space in there. Um, Let's see, this comes in at 20, 28 pages. And the table of contents, so we have the rules start on two and go through, special rules are on 23. So you got about 20 pages of rules. There are changes from the original edition listed as well as an extended sequence of play to give you more information about that. And then we've got a battle book, which is gonna be the uh, battles that you're gonna fight, obviously. So this has Civitate, 1053, Fulford, New Yorkshire, England, uh, September 6, 1066. Then a bibliography for that. And Stamford Bridge, Hastings, Tinchbry, Tinchbry, sorry, Luz and Evesham. And those are the scenarios. So if you look at this, it tells you which map section to use, where the units set up and so on and so forth, and the rules. I mean, just, you know, the various uh, rules for that battle. After selecting a battle to play, lay out the map, set up the units called for in the deployment section. Some units appear in more than one battle. They are made identifiable for scenario purposes by their command stripe color. In Norman Conquest, units of the same type may have different shock defense DRMs. It means the players need to choose the specific numbered units called for in the battle. The player always sets up their own pieces, never their opponent's pieces. Well, duh. Unless you're playing yourself, and then you'll set up both of them. So, anyway, the scenario book comes in at 24 pages, and on the back has the extended sequence of play. All right, so we got some charts. Got a couple of copies here of the weapon system matrix for shock and charge. This is on the coded cardstocks double width chart. We got a terrain chart for the different battle locations so you're gonna be different and then fire results shot count that so once you set up i mean you may have to reference the terrain chart but there are very few terrain types in each in each battlefield so you're mainly going to use the outside of both of these books so you get two copies of that you got our turn track your general track your flight point track and this is single sided it's obviously set next to the map and we've got our sheets of counters. So we've got a little tiny sheet of counters here. And these look to be about half inch. No, they're nine sixteenths counters. And they're not pre-rounded, so you'll need to, to get an Oracle Laminations 2.5 millimeter deluxe corner rounder, the correct tool for the job. So here we've got some markers and some extra counters here. We'll throw that on the ground there. This is dash three, so I guess we have two other sheets of counters. We have counter sheet one. We have the Saxons, the Norwegians, the Normans, the Papals. You can see they're all nicely colored, and there's those different command stripes that they were talking about earlier. A few markers mixed in where they have room. Counter sheet two. Yeah. 
Got the Royalist, the bar Baronial, and again some more markers. And there's the other side of that one. And then we've got paper maps that we'll take a look at in a minute for the different battle fields. They are large and they're only single sided. Uh, I take that back. This one appears to be double sided. We'll look at those in a minute. At GMT's famous bag o' bags. And we have two dice a red and a white. How will this battle turn out? We're going to say zero is a 10. I don't know what the rules require, but for this battle, we got a 9 to 8, so it didn't matter. White wins over red. All right, so let's take a look at those maps real quick. We have the first map. This is a single-sided map. This is for the Battle of Hastings. We know what that is, because Foyle fought his war there. I know someone. Foyle. Mister. And uh, so you start with a map key. I mean, a lot of it is strip up here that's got your terrain and your map key. And then Caldebec Hill. This, these are huge, They're hard to show. Uh, Battle Hill, Tellum Hill, various hills. So instead of just being a big flat field, you got all this different terrain you're gonna have to deal with, moving people around and getting across rivers, finding bottlenecks, things like that. So that is Hastings. This one's a double sided, I believe. So this is for, uh, can't read their font. Lerves, Lerves. So again, the map, not too terribly big in terms of the actual hexes, right? So this one seems to be mostly a big hill and a plain in front of it. And then on the other side, we have Bal of Evesham. And we've got the river Avon right there. Maybe stop and see a Shakespearean play. And then Green Hill. So they're not too big. Uh, I guess they're, let's see, they're uh, 34 by 22 maps. I mean, obviously since they're paper maps, you're gonna need uh, some sort of plexiglass, unfortunately, to put on there. And then, but mounted maps for this would be kind of silly, I think. And then finally, we've got the uh, last map here. And on one side, we've got the Battle of Tinchabray, right there. Let's get that one out first. Oh, it's also for the Battle of Stamford Bridge. Oh, it's their half sheet. Their half sheet maps on this case. I'm sorry, let's try to do this this way then. It's very convenient of them. All right, so you got a small map. This might be a little easier to get into. Uh, Stamford Bridge, so obviously this cuts it down to, uh, what do we got here, 17 by 22. Um, so you got the river, and you got some roads, and then the big field. And then the other side is Tingebrae, and that is just a big field. And then the other side of this map, when you open it up, there's actually another pair of small maps. So that's cool. If you really wanted to, you could actually probably split this in half and just store it as two half sheet maps. And the reason you couldn't might make it easier and more manageable. Just, you know, score it neatly down that middle there. We've seen some where they do that and it overlaps on one side, so you can't do that. But in this case, you could. So this is Civitate, Battle Civitate. And again, you get your map key, you got the river, Tor, and uh, Stena, you got a little hill, beach. So that's that side. And the other side here is the Battle of Fulford. Which again, we have a marsh, it looks like. Plain, road, river. The River Us. This is from September 20th, 1066. All right, so we're gonna put these away and we're gonna go do a quick recap. <laughs> Back in here. It's like folding a map in a car in the 70s. Do a re quick recap of everything you get in the box. So if you pick up a copy of Norman Conquest, Volume 5 in the Men of Iron series by Ralph Shelton and GMT Games, you are going to get 
those two dice. You're gonna get the bag of bags. You're gonna get two and a half sheets of counters. You're gonna get those maps that we took a look at. The counters. You're gonna get the turn flight point track sideboard. You're gonna get two player reference cards, double si uh, double width, uh, double sided and double width on coded cardstock. The 24 page uh, battle book and the 28 page tri pack rules manual. This is a tri pack, so that's three maps in it, I guess. And that is everything that comes in Norman Conquest Conflicts of the Normans and their successors from 1053 to 1265 by Ralph Shelton, GMT Games. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh!